let f of x and g of x be two differentiable functions. In this video, we're going to look at quotient rule. In the previous video, we looked at product rule. With quotient rule, and again, these functions are placeholders, numerator, and denominator. When you expand using quotient rule, you will take the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator then divide all of it by the denominator squared. Let's look at some examples. I'm going to define function h to be x squared over x plus 7. Following the quotient rule expansion, derivative of the top is 2x times the bottom left alone minus top left alone times the derivative of the bottom, which is 1, all over the denominator squared. Distributing across the top, we have 2x squared plus 14x minus x squared. Combining like terms, that's negative x squared, excuse me, 2 minus 1 is positive x squared plus 14x. And the whole time, you can just drag your denominator squared down. Most of the time, you don't even need to worry about the denominator. Just make sure the original denominator is squared when you get to the end. The second example, we have a function defined as 8x plus 9 over 2x minus 5. So we'll take the derivative of the top, which is 8, times the bottom left alone, minus the numerator, or the top left alone, times the derivative of the bottom all over the denominator squared. Distributing, that's 16x minus 40. Be careful here. You can move this 2 out front, and that way it's easier to visualize. If you swipe it, you can swipe that one out and put a 2 here. Totally fine. Uh, negative 2 times 8x, that's negative 16x. Negative 2 times 9, that's negative 18 still over the denominator squared. 16x minus 16x is 0. Negative 40 minus 18 is negative 58 over the original denominator squared. I did put a note here. Expanding the denominator squared is totally optional. If you see where expanding this, and what you would do is you would write that twice, foil it out, this denominator, if you were to expand it, would be 4x squared minus 20x plus 25. If expanding it leads to canceling out something from the numerator, go for it. That's why I made that little note. If you see where an expansion and a reduction can be done, go for it. Otherwise, just leave your denominator squared and move on to the next problem. Our third example. We have g of x defined as 4x minus 9 over x squared minus 1. Derivative of the numerator is 4 times the denominator left alone minus numerator left alone times the derivative of the denominator, which is 2x. Distributing the 4, 4x squared minus 4 minus, and again, you can bring this 2x to the front and distribute the negative sign with it. So we have negative... 8x squared. These two negatives make a positive 18x. Combining like terms, 4 minus 8, that's negative 4x squared, plus 18x minus 4, all over the original denominator squared. Let f of x equal 7x squared minus x plus 3 over 4 minus 7x. Derivative of the top is 14x minus 1 times the denominator minus numerator times the derivative of the denominator all over the original denominator squared. In the upper left part, we have two terms multiplied against two other terms, so we'll use FOIL method. First times first is 56x. 
the outer terms is negative 98x squared. Inner terms, negative 4. And last, positive 7x. This negative 7 you can bring out here. That subtraction and that negative 7 will make a positive 7. Distributing 7 is 49x squared minus 7x plus 21. Again, that negative and that subtraction makes a positive. And so it's really like distributing a positive 7 all over the original denominator squared. Combining like terms, negative 98 plus 49, that's negative 49 of the x squared terms. 56x plus 7x minus 7x, that's 56x. And then our constants, negative 4 plus 21, that's 17, all over the original denominator squared. I hope this video has helped you out. Um, use it as much or as little as you need. Reach out by phone, email, or swing by the office, and I will be glad to help you out if any problems should arise. Thank you.